हेलो डियर डॉक्स दिस इज डॉक्टर यासमीन हसीब आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू रॉयल डॉक लाइन टुडे इन फाइव मिनट गाइडलाइन सीरीज वी विल नेविगेट थ्रू द रिक्रेंट मिसकैरेज गाइडलाइन विच इज द नंबर इज सेवेंटीन एंड इट वॉज पब्लिश्ड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री The layout of this guideline is definition, risk factors, investigation, treatment options, and the summary. And the definitions of the miscarriage, as you all know, is uh, less than about twenty-four weeks of the gestation. And the recurrent mis- miscarriages are three or more first trimester miscarriages and sporadic miscarriages, usually because of the random fetal chromosomal abnormalities. And the incidence increases with increasing age. The incidence of the recurrent miscarriage is about only one percent of the women. and these risk factors are epidemiological thrombophilia genetic factors anatomical factors endocrinal factors immunological factors infective and the male factors this is a table about the epidemiological risk factors and please note that if there is a previous live birth there is no association with subsequent miscarriage risk or consanguineous relationship there is no increased risk of the miscarriage you can get this question in your exam and then in the table 2 they are showing that the, uh, there are the association of the acquired thrombophilias in which there is an increased risk of the miscarriage specifically if they are associated with the lupus anticoagulant anti cardiolipin antibodies this is about the recurrent miscarriage and uh, acquired thrombophilias is usually the antiphospholipid antibody syndromes which are antiphospholipid antibodies and lupus antibodies as well as cardiolipin antibodies anti beta 2 glycoprotein 1 antibodies with adverse pregnancy outcome which in the guideline is defined as the adverse pregnancy outcome is three or more recurrent miscarriages less than 10 weeks one or more physiological normal fetal loss more than 10 weeks one or more preterm birth less than 34 weeks due to placental cause in the table 3 they are showing about the inherited thrombophilias and they said that there is a weak association with the recurrent miscarriages and the evidence level is 2 plus plus then investigations the testing was for acquired thrombophilias specifically for the lupus anticoagulant and anti cardiolipin antibodies prior to the pregnancy is recommended in case of the second trimester the miscarriage they may offer the testing for the factor 5 leader mutations prothrombin gene mutations prothrombin s deficiency ideally within the research work only inherited thrombophilias as they have a weak association so therefore there is no routine recommendation for the testing of these thrombophilias cytogenetic analysis should be offered on the pregnancy tissue of the third miscarriage and subsequent miscarriage and in the any second trimester miscarriage this is very important Uh, to note this uh, this can come in the question and parental peripheral blood karyotyping should only be offered for the couples in whom the testing of the pregnancy tissue reports an unbalanced structural abnormality in the chromosome or there is an unsuccessful or no pregnancy tissue available for the testing and then there is a 3d ultrasound in cases of the congenital uterine anomalies and women with recurrent miscarriages should be offered the thyroid function test and assessment for tpos antibodies which is thyroid peroxidase antibodies and regarding the hla cytokine natural killer cell they should not be routinely offered or there is a sperm dna testing only outside a research context these are this is an important slide the treatment options are lifestyle modification thrombophilia treatment genetic factors anatomical factors endocrinal and immunological factor male factor that is a cause related in cases of acquired thrombophilia they said that the aspirin 81 mg and low molecular weight heparin which can be unfractionated heparin or the Uh, they can be given enoxaprine usually they are given from the positive pregnancy test until about 34 weeks of the gestation this is important to remember and aspirin and heparin should not be given to the women with unexplained recurrent miscarriages there is a lack of evidence to support the routine use of these medications in cases of the factor 5 leader protein s deficiency or prothrombin gene mutation these these are the important things then comes the genetic factors they are options for the couples with the chromosomal rearrangements includes attempting a further natural conception or pre implantation genetic testing structural rearrangement or the gamete donation you have to discuss it with the couple so this is about the genetic factors if there are anatomical factor then for example uterine septum uh, the resection of the uterine septum 
should be considered for the woman with the recurrent first or second trimester miscarriages ideally within an appropriate audit or the research context and then there is a lack of evidence to guide the management of the acquired uterine abnormalities usually associated with the recurrent miscarriages it depends upon the choice of the patient either expectant versus, versus the surgical options it must be individualized then comes the endocrinal factor they are saying that thyroxine supplementation is not routinely recommended in the women only the thyroxine supplementation may be considered in which the moderate amount of the subclinical hypothyroidism where the thyroid stimulating hormone is more than 4 milli international unit but it is not routinely recommended if the level is less than 2.5 milli international unit per liter so these are the important things to be noted then the immune factors which are immunotherapy or which are paternal cell immunization third party donor leukocytes trophoblast membranes and intravenous immunoglobulin they are not routinely recommended in such women male factor is there is no evidence to recommend any treatment for the male factor until or unless there is really something which needs to be addressed unexplained recurrent miscarriages they said that psychological support is very very important and the evidence level is 2 plus endometrial scratch does not have any role in such cases management of the subsequent miscarriages is along with the targeted treatment the communication by the healthcare professional with the woman ultrasound examination psychological support is very very important so in summary the definitions are very important risk factors diagnosis treatment they are all very important from the single best answers as well as extended matching questions and tables in this guideline are very very important so in the end i wish you good luck all if you like this five minutes guideline series please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and the MRS UG candidate so please let me know if you want any important guideline preferably to be done on the priority and i will do that for you wishing you again good luck stay blessed